My name is Stephen Shoulders, an IT professional and former world-class athlete. If you're working with the Cisco ACI and looking for an easy way to get a high-level overview of the contracts associated with EPGs, Layer 3 Outs or VRFs using VCNE within a tenant, you're not alone. Managing imported, exported or shared contracts between tenants can also be a challenge. In this demonstration, I build on my previous video where I used HashiCorp Terraform to configure the Cisco ACI. If you haven't seen the previous video, then please press pause, go watch it and come back and click play, as it will show examples of how I create the ACI configuration, and so I won't go into detail of that within this demonstration. Here I showcase how it's possible to interact with the Cisco ACI using HTML to visualize a contract matrix within a tenant. This tool not only provides a clear view of contract relationships, but also allows you to regularly backup contract configurations. These backups can be incredibly helpful for tracking changes, such as adding or removing contracts, or for restoring contracts from a specific point in time. I'll begin by logging into a local lab environment. However, switching between different environments is possible. Within this interface, I have several options to choose from including the contract matrix and other useful tools. Similar to the previous video, I'll quickly create three tenants, each containing application profiles, bridge domains, and EPGs. After that, I'll apply various contracts between them, again using Terraform, and then I'll view the contract matrix on screen, which will display a high-level view of where the contracts are applied as a consumer or a provider. I'll browse to the document that contains the tenant, application profiles, bridge domains, and EPG configuration. Having a quick look at the Terraform configuration. For example, here we can see the tenants that will be created. Scrolling down further, we can see the various EPGs within the tenants. First, I'll initialize Terraform. I'll access the Cisco ACI GUI so that I could try to catch some of the configuration being applied. Okay, next, let's run the Terraform plan which creates an execution plan, which lets me preview the changes that Terraform plans to make to the infrastructure. Scrolling down, I can view all the proposed changes. The plan command alone does not actually carry out the proposed changes. I'll click Terraform Apply, and I'll quickly browse to the Cisco ACI. There you go, I was just fast enough to see some of the tenant configuration being applied. I'll download the generated files, which also include the Terraform state files. Scrolling back to the application selection options, I'll select the contract matrix. At this stage, the three tenants should now dynamically appear for selection. Although I haven't created any contract yet, I should still be able to click on the contract matrix and view the actual EPGs and VRFs. Now I have some EPGs within the tenants, I'll go on to apply various contracts across the EPGs and VRFs. I'll keep the example simple to focus on illustrating the relationship between endpoint groups, VRFs, and later on, L3 out EPGs. I'll add contracts in a nonsensical manner to highlight the point of how we can visualize the relationships on screen. It's time to apply the contracts. Again, I will browse to the file that has the specified contract configuration as I scroll down, I'll expand some of the various tabs. Here we can see some of the ACI configuration variables that are due to be applied. Again, running a Terraform plan to make sure everything is okay. Naturally, within a production environment, you'd spend a long time reviewing the Terraform plan. I've clicked Terraform Apply and browse back to the ACI as I want to catch a glimpse of some of the contracts being applied within one of the tenants. Here I can see contract one is a consumer contract and contract three has been imported. All looks good within this tenant. Terraform is completed. I'll download the Terraform files. I'll store and save them for later use. Going back to the selection options, I'll select the contract matrix. I'll select Lab Steve Test 3 first. I'll refer to this as Tenant 3. Looking at this table, in the first column, I can see EPGs and VRFs. Also, I can see what application profile 
and tenant the EPG resides in, and I can see the tenant information for the VRF. Within the second column, I can see a contract name and its associated tenant name where the contract was originally created. For example, this contract was created in tenant 3. Further below, it displays where the contract is applied as a provider and or a consumer by the letter P and C. With this high level view, I can see that contract 3 was not only created within tenant 3, but it's been imported into tenant 1 and 2. Within tenant 1, it's applied to EPG 2 and 3 as a consumer, and within tenant 2, it's applied to EPG 2 as a consumer. The provider, EPG 3, is within tenant 3. Also, within tenant 3, I can see that no contracts have been applied to the VRF. Let's take a look at tenant 2. Looking at tenant 2, again we can see the imported contract from tenant 3, which is applied to EPG 2 within tenant 2 as a consumer contract. We saw this when I selected tenant 3. Within tenant 3, we saw contract 3 was applied to tenant 1 EPGs. As I've specifically selected tenant 2 in the options, you will notice the tenant 1 EPGs used in contract 3 are not displayed here. This is intentional as I've deliberately selected tenant 2 and the EPGs in tenant 1 are not configured as providers for contract 3. Since I specifically selected tenant 2, instead of displaying hundreds of other tenants using the same contract as consumers, where there is no communication with this selected tenant due to the lack of a provider status, I remove the irrelevant tenant information from the matrix as it makes it much easier to view the consumer to provider relationship for the tenant I've specifically selected. Also, I can see contract 2 has been created within tenant 2. It's been applied to EPG2 as a provider and consumer within its own tenant. It's also been imported into tenant 1 and has been applied to EPG1 and EPG3 as a consumer. Okay, let's take a look at tenant 1. Here we can see the tenant 3 and tenant 2 contracts which I've already touched on. Within tenant 1, we can see contract 1 is being created. Contract 1 is being applied to EPG 1, 2 and 3 within tenant 1. Also, it's been applied to the VRF within tenant 1. EPG 1, we can see it's applied as a provider. EPG 2, a consumer. EPG 3, provider and a consumer. And on the VRF, rightly or wrongly, it's being applied as a provider and a consumer. During this demonstration, I'm only displaying small amounts of contract relationships, when in reality, there could be hundreds. Here I'll select a new tenant, tenant zero. Instantly, we can see it has more contracts than the previous tenant. I will select the download option this time. This will allow me to back up and save the configuration. Also, if you can imagine those tenants that have hundreds of contracts, you could find yourself endlessly scrolling through the contract relationships. With the download option, you're able to filter out the information to only display what is relevant to your query. Over time, you may find some contracts have been added manually and others using automation. With the contract relationships saved to a file, you can compare contract differences between different dates, or you could use the file to add new EPGs, VRFs, layer three outs, or to create new contract relationships, or maybe remove them. Then reapply those changes using a form of automation. And finally, going back to the contract matrix. As stated, I intentionally kept the contract relationships to a minimum for demonstration purposes within the tenants. Here I'll select a tenant I previously created, which has additional contracts, but this time I've included a layer three out with its EPGs so that we can also see the relationships between them. For example, we can see there are separate contracts for the internet, AWS, and Azure. We can see the EPGs for the layer three out that are using the contracts as a provider, and we can see the other EPGs 
using the various contracts as a consumer. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more. And if you think accessing a contract matrix through your web browser might be useful for you and you want to know more, please feel free to reach out. I've put some additional information below. See you in the next one.